The mood was ugly in Morgan's saloon. I sat at the bar with both my hands in clear view. In the cracked mirror over the bar, I could see Ed lying by the poker table. I was pretty sure he was dead. I had warned Ed that this was not the time or place to try out the gimmick. Poker players in the West tend to shoot first and ask questions later, especially when they're losing large amounts of money. Ed hadn't listened. He told me that no one would spot the gimmick, but I could see it lying on the floor by the side of him. I decided I'd better look round. Not looking round would seem suspicious, as I was the only other stranger in the saloon. Yes, Ed was dead. Even though it was small, the derringer had made a big mess of Ed's chest. There'd only been one shot, and I could see that it was a double barrel. I didn't want to be the next target. Ed had left me with several problems. If anyone in the saloon guessed that Ed and I knew each other, I could be the next body on the floor. So simply claiming his body and picking up the gimmick was not an option. I could go home without Ed, but not without the gimmick. Mind you, turning up at home without him would raise a lot of questions, but perhaps not as many as turning up with him dead. Lots of people went missing in the West, and it hadn't caused any problems yet. I decided to take another slug of the Rotgut whisky and have a think. It was unfortunate about Ed, but leaving him mouldering in a grave in this out-of-the-way place should not have many significant consequences. No one knew his name, or more importantly where he was from, so any grave marker or town records could not surface at a later time to cause problems. That just left the big problem. How to get my hands on the gimmick without getting killed myself. Looking round the saloon, I could see things were calming down. The poker players were standing round the table, looking at their played hands and trying to figure out how to split the pot. Nobody was taking much notice of Ed except the barkeep, who had come over with some sawdust to scatter over the blood. Well, he wouldn't want another nasty stain on the floorboards. I watched as his polished boots almost crushed the gimmick. It didn't look very valuable. Just a small, plain-looking metal box. It could have been a cigar case and a cheap one at that. Nothing fancy about it. However, for me it was all important. Without it, I could not get home. Ed and I had always travelled together, so we'd not seen the need to have more than one gimmick. We took it in turns to use it, and over the years we'd found many ways to use it to our advantage. We should have been leaving in the morning, and Ed decided we should make a big night of it, and once again sample the lights of Madame Caroline's young ladies. That, however, took money, and with very little left, I would having already made the acquaintance of most of the girls there. That was why Ed decided that using the gimmick to help him win a few hands of poker was a good idea. Now I no longer cared about the girls, or the money. I just needed the gimmick. The saloon bar's doors swung open. Finally, the deputy sheriff had arrived, and my guess from Madame Caroline's as he didn't look happy at being disturbed. I tried to think if the deputy had seen Ed and I there together. Probably not. I couldn't be sure as my attention had been entirely on the ladies when I was there. At least now I could move without too much risk of being shot. The deputy asked the remaining player, poker players some questions and got quite a few conflicting lies and then looked round the saloon and fastened his gaze on me. I presume he thought that as a stranger I might give him some straight answers. I took this as my cue to stand up and walk over towards Ed's cooling body. I looked down at the congealing mix of blood, sawdust and flies and saw my chance. I dry heaved fell to my knees and grabbed for the spittoon with one hand. I was gambling now. While most hardened westerners were immune to the sight of blood, I hoped they would avert their eyes at the sight of a man being sick. Out of sight of everyone, my other hand covered the gimmick, and in a second it was safe in my pocket. I pushed the spittoon away into the corner, wiped my mouth on my sleeve and slowly stood up, looking ashamed of myself. 
The deputy looked at me with disgust and muttered something about weak stomached Easterners. I answered the deputy's questions carefully, if not totally truthfully, as I recalled the player with the danger still had a shot left. The reply seemed to satisfy them that, in his view of the law, this was a justified killing. He told me not to leave town till the judge got back in the morning. I agreed, but knew inside he would never see me again. I walked back to the bar and finished the whisky. It burned as it went down, but it felt good, as did the weight of the gimmick in my pocket. I was going home as soon as I could get out of the saloon. Just outside the saloon was a small dark alley leading to the privies. As I stepped into the shadows, I pulled the gimmick out of my pocket. Its surface shimmered as I held it, showing distorted reflections of me and the alley. Very dimly, I could see what looked like Ed's reflection standing next to me. That was one secret of the gimmick, the ability to see what might be. The stronger the reflection, the more certain it was. It made games of chance easy to win. Sadly, Ed had not been looking closely enough. I tapped the gimmick twice and the surface lit up with its menu. I pressed return home, and I was back in the 22nd century, but Ed was dead in Morgan's saloon. <laughs>